Okay, Houston, right. we've had a problem here. This is Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Hey, Houston, we have a problem. Today we're going to talk about the spring force. So imagine that you have a spring. So you've got a box, if you will, right here, and it's got a spring attached to it. All right? And you have the object, let's say a, some other box right here, that uh, you have on this spring. And then that's like a compressed spring, right? And what you can do is you can allow the spring... So I push the spring closer together, and then when I release the spring, what's going to happen, it's going to get longer, right? And then the box can be, if you will, launched. We could also launch it straight up. We'll actually do a problem like that. So there is energy inside of a spring, and when you compress the spring, it has a certain level of energy, and then as it is... Uh, allowed to expand, then you get actually a force. So if you think about it for a moment, there is, first of all, a force. Right now, if I push it in, there is a force of the compression. We'll call that F sub C. And that's being, um, I'm holding it back. So it's going to be pushing back since it's not actually moving would be a force of, uh, we'll say, force um, applied going forward, right? And what you can do is you can calculate what that force is. And it turns out that if you were to, like, plot how far you push it back, it follows a linear graph. And we say this, the force of a spring is equal to some constant k times x. Now, x is how much you compress the spring. So if I were to measure from here to here, and we call that x, that's the level of compression. So x is going to be measured in meters. And the k is called the spring constant. In fact, this is actually called Hooke's law. Uh, Mr. Hooke figured out this whole relationship. And that allows us to do some interesting questions. So let's say that um, in a given problem, the spring constant the spring constant of a spring is 300 newtons per meter. What force is applied when you stretch the spring 45 centimeters? Guys, what you do is you plug it into the equation. You would just F equals 300 Times. Now, this is in centimeters. It has to be in meters. Watch that. That'll be 0.45 meters. So you take 300 times 0.45, and you get 135 newtons. It's that simple. So these questions are, at some level, easy. But, of course, we could make it more complex because force is also equal to mass times acceleration. And that's where we're going to go in the next problem. So let's say we've got this object right here. So we've got a spring that, as you can see, is compressed from normal of 12 centimeters down to 4 centimeters. And there's a 10-gram ball on there. And the question is, how high will the ball go? So we're going to use our cool... Let's actually think about a couple things. Something that's important to understand is that there is going to be a force upward... But there's also a force downward because the ball has a mass of 10 grams. And so that's its weight. And its weight is going to equal to, now 10 grams is uh, 10 divided by 1,000 is 0 0.01 kilograms times 9.8. So the weight is going to be 0 0.098 newtons. That's important. And then the force up, let's think about what the force up is going to be. The force up is going to be F is equal to K times X. And the constant we can see is 100. And the X, now what's time with the X? You're going from 12 to 8. From 12 to 8, that's 8 centimeters or 0 0.08 meters. So the force upward, well, that's 8 newtons. 
So we have an unbalanced force, right? We have an 8 newton force up and a 0 0.098 newton down. So the force, the net force, if you will, going up is 8 minus 0 0.098, which is basically 0.1. So that's going to be 7.9 newton. So the weight of this object is not a huge factor. So you're going to have a 7.9 newton force going up. The question is, how far will it go up into the air? So now we have a if you will, Newton's law kinematics equation, because we know that F is equal to ma. So we can solve this force. We can say 7.9 equals 0 0.01 times a, and we can solve for a. And a is a big number, as it turns out. It would be 790 meters per second squared. That seems like a crazy high acceleration, and it is. But remember, it's only going to accelerate for the gap between 4 and 12 centimeters. So only when the spring is in contact with the ball is it going to accelerate. So if what I want to do is let's see if I can calculate how fast it, it leaves the uh, spring-loaded gun thing, if you will. And so what I can do is I can use a kinematics equation. I can say V2 squared is equal to v1 squared plus 2a, and we can say delta x. It's really actually delta y because it's going up. Let's say y. And it starts out a velocity of 0 squared. I'm trying to find v2 squared. What's the speed when it leaves? Plus 2 times 790 times the change in the y, which is 8 centimeters. So. 0.08 meters. And note that this is V2 squared, uh, and then you have to take the square root, right? So I, I calculated this, and I then took the square root of this, and I got V2 to be 11.2 meters per second. So that means it's going to be leaving the launcher um, at 11.2 meters per second. Now, the question, though, still is, how high does it go? Well, it's now it's, we've just got a problem where the object is leaving, going 11.2 meters per second. How high does it go? You can actually use this same equation, and you can say v2 squared equals v1 squared plus 2a uh, delta y, and delta y is what we're solving for. But now we're not talking about the acceleration from the spring. We are on the Earth, and what is the a? a is negative 9.8 meters per second squared on the earth, and so, and at what point, V2, when the, when the ball is rising, it's going to stop before it turns around, so its final velocity is zero, and then the V1 is actually the V2 from over here, so that's 11.2 squared plus 2 times negative 9.8 times delta Y, and then you do your fun algebra stuff, and you get delta y to be 6.45 meters. And that's how you would figure out how high it would go 6.45 meters. That's a note, that's not 100% true, because if the launcher is 12 centimeters tall, it's going to launch from 12 centimeters. Does that make sense? So this is actually going to be plus 12 centimeters. So that's going to be 6.45 plus 0 0.12 meters. That's the, right, there's 100 centimeters in a meter, so 0.12 centimeters. Uh, so that'd be 6.57 meters. And that's how you would solve a problem like that. But it's, again, this isn't hard. We've done uh, kinematics equations before. You use the spring constant to find the force, boom, 7.9 meters, realizing, though, that when it's only going to accelerate for a very short period of time, um, so 790 meters per second, but it's only compressed for 8 centimeters, or 0 0.08 meters. So therefore, um, the acceleration, we can, it, it seems like a reasonable number. It's been moving at 11 meters per second. This may look like a crazy high number, and it is, but because it's just only being applied for such a short force, um, that's how you can solve these problems. And then you 
use kinematics equations. I may have asked for a different thing, and you may have to use a, a different kinematics equations, but it's all going to work out. Houston, we don't have a problem. Springs, not so hard. We'll see you in class.